My life be like. Good coffee. Oh, hey guys. Pops and Paladin here. Good morning. And I want to talk to you about Mythic Sisters of the Moon. And I'm going to do the same thing that I did on Demonic Inquisition. And I'm going to show you both Protection Paladin and Retribution Paladin's uh, point of views. However, I'm only going to show you Protection Paladin's point of view for Phase 1. And then I'm going to show you Ret for Phase 2 and Phase 3. Uh, because really, it's the same fight on Heroic. Uh, I just want to talk about one specific thing in phase one as a protection paladin and then pretty much it like i said it's a heroic fight just with more damage let's talk about the specific gear that i'm wearing in protection paladin so i'm wearing a quote unquote survival build and that includes sauron's resolve and soul of the high lord along with my reliquy of the damned and my dark moon deck for specific dps in the range of 920 to 930 because that's the average player's uh, item level as well as what I'm wearing as well, uh, you'll be expected to be doing about 700 max DPS and 524 for the 80th percentile. And you should be expecting to also do about 386 heals per second for this specific fight. But I also told you I'm going to talk about Retribution. So here's my gear for Retribution Paladin. It's a four piece, uh, obvious, because I need all of the additional buffs. I am not running two piece, four piece, because I don't have... Uh, Leandrin's ring uh, so uh, if you want to be doing max DPS for the same range it's 1.1 million uh, but for the 80th percentile you should look at about 1 mil uh, DPS I'm running final verdict zeal and blade of the wrath and you can notice all the rest of the relics that I have but um, they're all pretty standard I am a DPS built retribution paladin because that is what Tuma Sargeras is it's all AoE so I guess let's talk about the fight since it's already started on the screen, right? So we pulled the boss the same way that we do every boss, Potions of the Old War. Do not pre-pot anything else except if you're starting a full-on AoE fight like Desolate Host, then you would pre-pot Potions, or I'm sorry, Prolonged Power. Um, but other than that, we're just going to stick with Potions of the Old War. So when we tank this boss, what our specific group does is we tank both tanks on the green side marker as you can see we we line the markers up all the way across the board and we tank it on the green so that means we have one less melee on the green uh, to make up for the double tanks and the reason why we do that is because we're trying to have tanks take the damage for the moon glaive um, and have the the bounce kind of be negated that's why you see me wearing a stamp flask right here uh, but what I want to talk about in phase one just occurred so we entered into our first incorporeal shot. The floor was completely one color, and she moonglaved just before she went into incorporeal shot. Now, there are times where that moonglave will not appear, and you'll get lucky and completely skip that one. And there are other times where it just randomly comes out right as she's doing incorporeal shot, so you don't really have time to drop it off. That one sucks. So what I always do is I try to have an ardent defender available Sometimes I'll use my Guardians of the Ancient King if I've already used my Ardent, uh, kind of as a DPS slash damage reduction uh, in there. But what's really going to happen is as it's coming through, since you you have that debuff as the floor is changing color and your tank gets discorporate on them, and you still have like six seconds of discorporate left and you have to taunt the boss. So you taunt the boss... Use your blessing of the spell warding because you negate all of the stacks of that moon burn or whatever the stack is, the stacks are, and now all you're tanking is boss damage, which is really helpful when you got uh, discorporate on you for that last like four or five seconds. That's the only one that's going to screw you up. All the other ones you can get rid of that buff really quickly. So now let's enter into phase two as Red Paladin. What you're going to notice in Rep Paladin, I already entered the phase with Avenging Wrath. That's because I have uh, relics to increase my Avenging Wrath, so it will last almost all the way the entirety of Lust, which I'm completely fine with losing the last few seconds of it 
um, because I'm already rolling through all of my, my cooldowns and all of my rotation. So I'm fine with that. What you really need to take care of in Phase 2 is Moon Talon. And now I'm showing a specific 7.3 fight because Moon Talon inadvertently, inadvertently had their health pool increase by a tremendous amount. And Blizzard has since changed that back, but this kill is prior to that health pool loss. And what I want you to notice is how the group handled it. We will stay on Moon Talon all the way up until that bubble appears. We'll burn that bubble and then immediately go back to Moon Talon just to kill it. Uh, and because that screech, that hurts an awful lot. So as Retribution Paladin, the things that you're going to have to deal with now are Rapid Shot. And what you saw, Rapid Shot just almost annihilated me completely. So I had to full heal myself uh, with Lay on Hands. Uh, so you'll want to try to use Vengeance for that. Uh, however, I try to use my Vengeance um, more offensively. Now, it was used offensively in Rapid Shot because I knew it was going to happen to me. So I said, hey, I'm using my Vengeance. And then when Vengeance fell off, uh, I called for more heals. And then it was, you know, destroying me, so I lay on hands. Uh, but I use my Vengeance as offensively as possible. Now, granted, I'm still using it defensively because I'm soaking some kind of mechanic. Either Moon Burn, Rapid Shot, or the incorporeal shot in phase three. So I'm still always using it for a defensive cooldown, but I know where my position is always in relationship to the boss. So when it explodes, it explodes onto the boss and not just into nowhere. So that's important. The other thing I wanna mention, especially as Moon Talon comes out right now, is you will notice I never swap off of Captain. And that is because I have a specific AOE build on my character. So swapping kind of is negated because I have increased damage on my Divine Storm. So I just don't swap. And I know the rest of my group is swapping. Now if they weren't swapping, of course I would have to swap and help out there. Um, but you'll notice here that my damage was on par with the majority of the people who actually did hard swap just based on my build. So I don't want you to think I'm doing mechanics incorrectly here. Now, uh, as we enter into Phase 3, as Protection Paladin in Phase 3, you have to deal with the same things as you did on Heroic. You get that, that Lunar debuff that you take to two stacks and then you swap. That's it. It's pretty much a lame fight as tank. Now in Phase 3 as Retribution Paladin or any DPS, you're going to have to deal with not only dodging Moonglaive and soaking in Corporal Shots, and dodging other people's glaives that they decide to just travel through the group uh, because they're not moving out and helping out melee. Uh, you'll also have to deal with this um, thing called Lunar Burn. And Lunar Burn, what that's going to do is it's going to drop all these nice little circles that you see in the upper corner by the X marker right now, those yellow circles. And what those are going to do is they're going to silence uh, and they're going to damage you. And I believe it's 1 million damage per second, so it's an awful lot of damage. So you want to take that to the outside of the room. This part of the fight is truly the DPS race. Now, you're not going to hit any sort of enrage timer on this fight. It's just a soft enrage because you'll eventually run out of floor space because of all the circles as they compile around the room. Uh, now, if you have an ability to... Um, negate all damage you can stack them as you see in the bottom of our screen somebody stacked all of those so if i had my divine shield up and i got lunar burn i can pop that and stand in a circle so all of those circles go in one spot so we're not wasting space um, but i got lucky in this fight and didn't get the lunar lunar beacon at all on me so i did get very lucky I, i'm surprised i got so lucky because of how many people died in our fight i should have gotten it uh, at least once if not twice but it didn't happen so hooray all right so as we're going through this fight you really need to be cautious of where your feet are what you noticed on my screen that just disappeared was a blue circle and that blue circle is a tracker for how many people are dropping their buffs or their debuffs and as that starts to reach you know five six you should never reach seven but it may uh, you're taking a lot of damage as a group so uh, as a raid leader i have that one specifically on my screen not only to tell people to stop dropping their buffs but to know when to drop my buff myself as well like i said because i do not want to get into that six seven eight range because it's an awful lot of damage going on all right as 
we are still burning on this boss and still going and still hitting it hard, you'll see that our room is shrinking tremendously. Now, what I do really appreciate about this fight and the moon talent health pool increase was that our healers were running out of mana. As you can see, I believe, yes, every single one of them is oom right now. And what that allowed to happen is people dying. And as a retribution paladin, dead teammates are the best teammates because they buff you with that retribution aura, which is awesome. Uh, so, of course, that helped out a little bit with my DPS there. Uh, I just didn't have Memento of Anger Boda on, which would have been amazing for this fight, because I would have had so many procs on it, right? Alright, so, quick recap as we ending this fight, and you notice that uh, I want to give a shout-out to Fuzzy Tots, who was the last remaining Matt Damon Raider uh, on this fight to be alive, and whatever she cast for the last five seconds of the fight, thank you for beating this for us uh, on night two of the patch. Thanks. But, uh, quick recap. Uh, watch where you're standing. Uh, watch where you're standing. And always be DPSing the boss. Alright. Use your vengeance offensively as well as, you know, quote unquote defensively too. So that way you can finish the fight off and kind of go from there. Let's talk about resource management because that is the number one priority for Retribution Paladins. So resource management, what you're going to notice here is I didn't waste many of my holy powers. I had four wasted on Blade of Justice, which is fine. Uh, one wasted on Zeal and eight wasted on Wake of the Ashes. And you might say, man, you wasted eight on Wake of Ashes. The majority of the time that you're going to cast Wake of Ashes, you already have one holy power. Rarely are you going to have zero and cast Wake of Ashes. And you don't want to hold Wake of Ashes for like, you know, I'm waiting till I have zero so that way I get all five and none are wasted. Because you want that that tick on the boss. That's more important than trying to wait until you get a zero. You might not have a zero for 20 seconds and then you wasted that cooldown of Wake of Ashes. So don't hold it. Throw it out there. Now if you have three already, obviously don't use it. But you know, be smart with your resource management. I will do a video here shortly about my specific UI as Retribution Paladin. Hopefully it'll help you out if you're struggling with your Ret Pally. Uh, but really, it's it's pretty darn simplistic. You notice all I do is track my Holy Power, my Avenging Wrath, and my Judgment buff on the boss. That's pretty much all, I, all I'm tracking. But anyways, I wish you all the best in your videos. Stay tuned for my, my future ones as they come out. I wish you all the best in your kills, and good luck on getting loot. I'll catch you all later. Have a good one.